Hey guys, what's going on? Cesar Rodriguez here, and I just had a quick message for you and a couple nuggets that I really wanted to point out. I'm actually going to film this here while I just parked in my car. I'm not going to drive this time. I know sometimes I'll shoot videos when I'm driving and some people, you know, get a little freaked out. I probably get more views. People are probably waiting to see if I get into an accident like NASCAR or something, right? <laughs> they're, they're watching more for the crash than they are the uh, actual event. But um, here's the deal. Um, I had this thought because, you know, sometimes when I talk and I coach people, um, I notice something. A lot of people whenever they start things, they're so afraid to fail that they never really play all out. You know, they, they've got one foot in and what one foot out, and they're just waiting for a reason to justify their failure. And they don't want to try 100% and put every bit and ounce of effort into what they're doing because they're afraid that if they do that and fail, then they've actually failed. But they feel like, hey, if I build with one foot out the door and one foot in the door, then that way, if things don't work out and I fail, then I can say, well, you know, I never really gave it all my effort. You know, and I just want to tell you something that the irony of that is if you do that, you're always going to fail because if success requires that you jump in, success requires that you don't toe dip and you don't just, you know, put your toes in and feel the water. You've got to jump off the diving board. I mean, you got to cannonball in and say, look, I'm all in. You got to burn the boats and 100 percent commit because if you don't, the irony is if you're constantly approaching with a toe dipping attitude and you just have this unconscious thing like, well, as long as I don't try. And, and again, this isn't conscious. I'm, I'm talking to what your subconscious mind does. Why is sometimes people have problems committing? A lot of times it's that little voice inside of you is basically trying to set you up so that if you come, if you fall down and you don't make it, you've got a great excuse. So what I see all the time and coaching people and even people on my team is they, 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 they go, well, you know, I don't want to go to the big event. You know, I, I could, but I, you know, I got this thing or they're always looking for that excuse to not go all in. They're always looking for that excuse to, that they can lean on and that way they can justify why they didn't make it. So here's my message to you. Go all in, play full out and commit and stop looking for the excuses that are all around you because you're always going to find one. All right. You know, it's interesting because I always look for things that happen in my life. Whenever something devastating happens to me, you know, there's a death in the family or there's this crazy thing that happened that's going to, that should by all means prevent me from doing what I need to do. When that happens, I immediately look at it and go, wow, okay, this is the challenge. I must be close. I must be on the verge of a breakthrough because the enemy, whether you call it the universe, whether you call it the devil, whatever you want to call it, the enemy is throwing something in my way, trying to distract my view so then that way I can lose focus because that's all it takes is just a little lack of focus. And it's so funny because I talk to some people and I know when they're out. Like I know when they're out of the business before they even know because they tell me, oh my God, you know, this happened and so now I can't go to the big event or oh my gosh, you know, I just had this death in the family or, oh my God, I just, you know, had this, you know, person get sick. And I already know when they say that, if they don't follow it up with a, but I'm going to still do my, you know, exposures every day, but I'm not going to let that get in the way. If they don't follow up with that sentence, I know they're out. I know what they're doing is they're giving me a, a reason. And the more serious the event, the more they feel like, well, I couldn't possibly, I mean, I'm moving right now or I'm, I'm moving houses or I'm trying to sell my house or, you know, this person's sick. You can't possibly expect me to make a phone call on the drive to the hospital. I mean, you couldn't possibly, I mean, I have to mourn the entire way there and the entire way back. And for the next week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, I can't possibly prospect someone. I can't, you know, you wouldn't expect me to go to an event after that. Well, listen, I've talked to and met leaders that literally, you know, one of the most inspiring things I ever heard is this young lady said that she literally miscarried her child. And it was like the most devastating thing in the world to happen to her. And she was just like on her way to an event. She miscarried her child, like literally in the airport on her way to the event. And she, and she was just crying and she was in tears and people were like, Oh my God, come turn around. You've got to come home. Don't go to the event. Come into our arms. Let us love on you. Let us embrace you. You know, you, you, you need to just have some time right now. You don't need to be at the big event. And you know what she said? She goes, that's all the more reason I need to go. 
that's all the more I need to be around positive people. I need to be in this atmosphere of people. I need to do this. This is my story. And one day she's going to be, she said, one day I'll be able to share this story and it will inspire and hopefully overcome all the people out there with the lamest excuses in the world that they use and they lean on to justify why they couldn't do a thing or why they didn't make it or why they failed, you know, and it's amazing because I hear these stories and I'm, I'm going to tell you something to the extent that you buy your own story and that prevents you from doing something is to the extent that you're going to fail period. Like I'm being straight up. Like if you're so good at selling yourself, you know, these stories like, Oh, well, you know, this happened, then that's why I can't then you're definitely not going to make it in pretty much anything. Like, I'm, I'm being real. You're going to hate me. I'm sorry. Sorry if you're seeing this and you're on my team and, you know, you're now going to quit, whatever. You know, here's my mindset, okay? My mindset is when something happens to me, I immediately think, wow, this is huge. I can't believe what an awesome story this is going to be when I go anyway, when I do the thing anyway. You know, when I had surgery and I was on drugs and I still prospected, I still prospected nurses while I was like retarded and not even like slurring my words. And when I recruited someone that day when I couldn't even drive and I said, you're going to have to come to my house. So I have that story. So when someone says, oh, you know, you don't understand Caesar. I just had surgery and you know, I'm laid up in the hospital bed. I'm like, awesome. Imagine if you recruited someone, what a killer story that would be right now. Imagine all the people that from now on, when you do things like that, you eliminate the excuses for your team to use in the future. And if you want a powerhouse team that's duplicating, you have to be harder on yourself than anyone else is. When other people want to coddle you, you have to get tough and you have to beat yourself up. My trainer just said, Caesar, I've been, he's been training with me for over a month and he goes, man, I still have to get used to your mindset because everyone else that I train, they go, hey, you know, do we have to do legs today? I was on my feet all day. Hey, do I have to you know, can we go a little light today? I got to work this evening. And he goes, you Caesar, you're like the total opposite, man. He's like, damn, man. Like when I'm ready to like, you know, Hey, that's it. That's your last set. Okay. Stop. You're like three more. Let's go. And I'm like, absolutely. And I told him, I said, Drew, the thing is that I've learned, and this is what I teach. You have to be harder on yourself than anyone else is. All right. You're worth more than you expect. And if you want to have more and believe me, you're worth it. You have to believe bigger you have to expect more, you have to work harder, you have to work smarter, and you got to be harder on yourself than anyone else is because the world is going to coddle you, but you have to be tougher on yourself. When I was told, hey, the rule is expose two people a day, I would get my two a day and I would say, awesome, now everything that I do after this is my real work ethic. So I would get my two a day, got to be core, but then I would say, now let me see how many more I can do after that. I remember Muhammad Ali once said, they said, how many sit-ups can you do? And he goes, I don't know. I don't start counting until I feel the burn. And that's how you have to be if you want to be successful. You've got to have that mindset that what everyone else's standards are, that's going to be your minimums. What everyone else's maximums are, that's your minimum. If you have that mindset, if you look at obstacles as opportunities to create future success stories and testimonials, so that your team can't use those obstacles. Can you imagine being on my team and trying to give me an excuse? I mean, it, it's ridiculous because whatever excuse you've got, I probably have a situation personally that was more extreme than that and I found a way to do it anyway. And that's why I'm here. So it's, it's pretty ridiculous and what you wanna do is you wanna be a non-negotiable leader. You wanna be the leader that people go, damn, dude, I can't give this guy an excuse because I know what he's gonna say. You know, he's going to have a story. Your, your mother died. And I'm going to say, well, that's all right. Cause you know, in 19, you know, 99, I literally was dead on the hospital bed and I was declared dead, came back to life. And I prospected the nurse as soon as I opened my eyes. I mean, I'm going to have a story. Okay. That's not a real story. <laughs> all right. That never happened to me. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't even, I was started in like 2001, but, um, you know, the bottom line is I want my team to know that. All right. So I, I don't want to be, you know, and, and, as, and even if I coddle you ever, you just need to be harder on yourself. All right. Because the world is expecting you to be soft. But if you want the big results, you got to be hard. All right. So I love you guys. I wanted to film this video here. This was on my heart. It was fresh in my mind. So I said, before I pull out of this driveway, I got to give some fire. All right. Because I know someone out there needs it. And I don't know if it's you, but if it's you, go ahead and drop a comment below you know, let me know, like the video, share it with your team. I love it when people do that. That's such an honor. Um, and I've got so many teams and so many leaders out there that my videos are all over their team sites. And I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys so much. And uh, love you guys. 
I love to be a little hardcore on you sometimes because if I'm not someone, maybe no one else will. All right, so I'm here to get your results. I hope you can appreciate that and I hope you can stand me for it. And I can promise you, if you do, if you hang in there, you're gonna do it. But you gotta be tougher on yourself than anyone else is. I'm Cesar Rodriguez, take care. Catch you on the next video.